Our next storyteller is Darla Cheek. She has been an Oklahoman all of her life. Her passions include her family, church, friends, and helping children in their time of need. She feels extremely blessed with her husband, Jeff, their children and grandchildren. She relies on her strong faith in God and her role as executive director of Middell Youth. Darla's story is called, I Am Deceased. My blood pressure is normal. My heart rate averages 90 beats per minute, and I am healthy for being overweight and deceased. Yes, I am dead. My name is Darla, and I am the daughter of an individual who is bipolar and paranoid schizophrenic, and this is my brave story. My father was a very successful businessman in his early years and married my beautiful mother. Since they were unable to have children of their own, they adopted my brother and myself from the welfare system. Our lives went from very normal to completely upside down when I was young. Back in those days, there was little known about mental illness. They actually thought my father was allergic to wheat. After numerous doctors and tests, it was diagnosed that he was indeed a paranoid schizophrenic. At that time, I had no idea what that would mean for my family. I became the guardian of my father in December of 2011. After he thought that he had been poisoned and he went to bed for several months. He wouldn't leave his house, his utilities were turned off, and he was very dehydrated. We had to involve adult protective services to get him out of the house in his weakened state. They actually had to carry him out and then spent lengthy time in the hospital, including learning to walk again. Thus started my role as the guardian of a man who does truly believe that I am deceased. For most of my life, I have been deceased. Being deceased is very hard to explain. However, I do it often. I also have numerous names. For example, last week I was Darla Castro. That is Fidel Castro's daughter. My husband is a trained assassin with the Russians because he is bald. Who knew that being bald you would be a Russian assassin? This could all change at any time and he could go back to being a normal son-in-law, but his daughter will always be deceased. When I am asked, are you his daughter? You see, I pause and then I hesitate. I kind of stall and him haw. Then I try to change the subject pretty darn quick because there is no correct answer. If you were to ask my father if he had any children, he firmly states, no, they died. How did I die? Well, I died in the parking lot of Brahms in a car wreck in Weatherford, Oklahoma, and he can provide graphic details and eyewitness accounts. Most of my family members have been dead from now and then and they come back, but I have the most difficulty as his guardian. It is difficult to check him into the hospital for his numerous stays. He will tell the nurses, doctors, oh, those nice police officers, that I am not his daughter and I am just trying to have him killed. On, one, on more than one occasion, I have been asked to leave the hospital or prove that I was his child. At his nursing home, he, he wouldn't take his meds, and the nurse would tell him, we're going to call your daughter. Oh boy, does that create laughs, because he will clearly state there are no phones in heaven. I guess the good news is, at least I'm in heaven. I don't mind being deceased. What upsets me the most is the delusions that people are trying to kill him or torture him. It truly must be terrifying in his mind to think that your entire family has been killed and tortured and now the assassins are coming back and they're pretending to be your family members. 
He believes that he is being drugged by his medication and refuses to take it. We spend three months at a time usually at the hospital. These are the times that I beg the doctors in tears to help him in these violent delusions. And why can't we force his medications? I have finally found a wonderful psychiatrist, Dr. Scarce, right here in Norman, Oklahoma, that has listened to my every concern and works with my father. She actually takes the time to look for solutions and alternations on medication. I have been granted a court order by a judge that allows the nursing home to, to make sure that he does take his medications. This is unheard of in the state of Oklahoma, but I am quite driven, and I will not quit fighting to break the stigma of mental illness. My father's mental illness has actually given me strength that I didn't even know was possible. I am strong enough to take on my own family, the court system, doctors, nurses, and even DHS when I feel that my father is not receiving the care that he needs. Mental illness is not a choice, not for the individual or the family members. We need much more assistance with DHS standards, social security benefits, and the medical system needs to be improved. The legal system could also help with the mounds of paperwork that all of this creates. Um, it was very difficult to get a photo ID. That is something that should be able to be fixed on an individual who's in, declared incompetent. As difficult as this journey has been, I am truly blessed. I have a lot more understanding and compassion, and I'm much more effective as my role as an executive director of a counseling agency. I'd like to say I'm very active, very productive for a dead person. <laughs> Please join me in breaking the stigmatism.